Well, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Stephanie Cates with Merchant Processing Solutions. And I have today Michael Ross of Heartland Payroll. And I've asked Michael to get on because I've been listening to him uh, for a while talk about payroll. And uh, he kind of uh, alluded to some really great things that uh, payroll systems can do for small businesses. And since we're all kind of re-looking and re-examining our businesses right now, I thought this would be an opportunity to have Mike on. So Michael, please go ahead and, and talk about a little bit about what you do. Well, thank you, Stephanie. I'm really glad to be here. So my name is, uh, like you said, it's Michael Ross. I'm with Heartland Payroll. Um, so we're a payroll solutions company. We are the third largest publicly traded payroll company in the United States. However, what makes us unique is that we only focus on small, medium businesses. So, you know, businesses that are from one to 250 employees, more specifically, those that are under 75 employees that are basically um, left to self-service platforms. So at Heartland, what makes us different is that we actually provide a dedicated payroll person, someone that they could go to and talk to and, and work with on a regular basis, as well as me, I'm part of the, I'm like the relationship ma manager. So that's like I'm a 911 phone call for anything that's going on. So they can run their business and we can handle the payroll side of things. How important is payroll to a small business? So obviously the payroll side of it is paying your employees. I mean, how important is it to have an employee get their paycheck on time? So many times I walk into these small businesses that are not using a payroll service yet and they're just running behind because they have so many other things in their plate. And it's like, I'm just trying to get the, the checks written for my employees. And they're, they're standing there like hoping that they're going to get their check. Or in other cases, people saying, Hey, I just, I have to give you my check on Saturday because I don't have the money in the funds. I didn't get time to get to the bank to move the money. If you're an employee, it doesn't feel really good. And that happens a lot in the small business space, where as a payroll company of any, from anywhere would streamline that, right? And, and take that off your plate and make sure that you, the employee, the employer sending that check to the employee automate, maybe through direct deposit or even a check that's mailed, sealed and signed already so that they have the confidence to know, hey, my employee is going to get paid on time. That's so important. I would say today when everybody is really concerned about half of us are unemployed or, you know, self-employed or in unemployed and, you know, where's my next paycheck coming? And even in do good times, without getting your paycheck, it really makes you want to go find a different employer, you know? Um, sure. So, so what's your ideal size? I know you said under 75, but I was hearing you talk about um, one person, a, a business with one person that's getting paid, you know, out of the, the, the on payroll, like they're, they're an employee. Talk to me how one person can benefit from your services. So, I mean, obviously what I do is I talk to each person that I meet, each employer that I meet, and I, and I find out what their needs are. And I, and I guide them. Not all the times are they going to fit with Heartland, but we can help. And what I mean by that is, if you were to go use a platform like QuickBooks, and you would just pay QuickBooks, that would cost you $102 to $110 to have them handle your payroll every month. And there's no individual service. It's a lot of things that you would look for as far as integrations go don't exist. Now in a one person space, you don't need as many, but once you grow to three, four or five, it starts to make more sense that you need a lot of these different integrations that they don't even provide. The good news is at Heartland, we're less expensive than that traditionally than what I just said for what paychecks is chart, excuse me, what uh, QuickBooks is charging, but we're providing more value. So as you grow, you'll already be in the right place. Now, if you're a self-employed 1099, not a W-2, meaning you're the individual owner and you're not taking from your business a salary yet, you're just taking distributions and you're paying yourself as a self-employed 1099, well, you don't need to be on Heartland's platform yet. I would probably recommend at that point, you would go to like a CPA or your accountant to handle the filing at the end of the year. and They'll, they'll walk through that. It's really simple and it's really inexpensive to do. But once they tell you when this happens, CPA says, hey, you've been in business for over three years. You're making way too much money. You have to start paying yourself on payroll so that you can start saving money because you're costing yourself too much as a 1099. And from that point, you'd want to be on a platform like mine. So there gets to be a point as your business grows that you really need to become an employee 
it, it doesn't, I mean, the expenses that businesses can expense usually are pretty good. Although I did hear recently with some of the tax changes last year and this year, it was reduced a little bit as to what can be taken out. So now paying yourself as an employee of your own company, that actually saves you more money. How would that do that? So one of the things you have to realize is that as an, an employee, a self-employed individual, you have to pay self-employment tax, which is 15%, right? And that's going to be 15% on your, on your net number after you've done all your expenses. But the government actually says after three years over a certain amount of money, you should be an employer and paying yourself as an employee. And in that case, um, you have the opportunity to pay yourself a salary. Here's the funny thing. Right now, as a 1099, if you paid yourself net $50,000, you'd have to pay 15% on $50,000. If you make yourself an employee, employer situation, now as a business, not as an individual, the business can take more write-offs than an individual can. And as a business, taking those write-offs, and this is guidance you should get from your CPA, but you then have the opportunity to pay yourself a salary. Now that salary might not be $50,000. It might only be, as an example, in the state of Florida, maybe 15 or $16,000. Now, if you have to pay 15% of 50,000 or 15% of 16,000, you can see how there's gonna be a savings just in that space alone. Okay, okay, so then basically the company absorbs all those costs and not you as the self-employed. Right, again, more opportunities for write-offs and having to pay less taxes to the government. Okay. Okay. I see that. So you're, uh, you were talking uh, the other day about um, having saved a boatload of money. Why, why do people, how can, how can businesses with let's say five to 10 employees pay too much? Uh, what, what do they get hooked into that they're overpaying and what they, sh what should you be looking for right now as we're all taking this time to look at our businesses what should they be looking for to decide whether they want to stay with who they're with or maybe talk to you? Okay, so let's talk about first um, services rendered, right? Um, and this is on the traditional payroll side. Um, does, does your payroll company, are they a publicly traded company? Because at the end of the day, if you're with an ADP or a Paychex or a Heartland, your publicly traded company has got a fiduciary responsibility to make sure that they have the funds to pay the government the taxes they've collected. If you're with a small payroll company that isn't publicly traded and they're going through the same situation as every other business out there right now, if their doors full and they can't stay in business for whatever reason, they don't have to pay the government. They could take your money and walk and that's not right, but they can. And there's nothing you can do about it because you, the business owner still have to pay the taxes to the government. Now look, this, this isn't a fear thing. This is just a reality of not being with a publicly traded company. There's a certain concern when we're looking at places and stages in life like this. More importantly, what services are they getting? Are they gonna be able to have um, integrated services with Workman's Comp? Are they gonna be able to integrate with healthcare? Are they gonna be integrating with time and attendance? Are they going to have the opportunity to have electronic onboarding? Are they gonna be able to provide your employee a pay card if they don't have a bank account so they don't have to go to a check cashing store and i these sound like simple things but not all payroll companies provide those to the point of the money side whenever i meet with a client instead of just having a package that that a lot of payroll companies do and this isn't wrong it's just different um, they have packages to sell and at heartland we're, we're we're just a different entity we don't sell packages the way we do it is we sit down with the individual, we talk about what their needs are. We truly take a consultative approach to try to find, understand all right, what is it that you need or don't need. A lot of times I'll look at what they're getting from another company and I'll ask them, do you use this? No. And I'll talk about maybe if they should or shouldn't use that item, whatever it is, like maybe it's general ledger integration. And they'll say, oh, well, I don't have QuickBooks. I just use this book over here I write in. No integrating that, why are you paying for it, right? So. You probably should change in that situation, but there's no reason to. If you're not going to change what you're doing, you'll need to pay for that service. So I look at things like, hey, how much, how, how often are you hiring? I haven't hired anybody in 10 years. Well, why do you pay for 35 background checks a year? If you're never hiring anybody, isn't that a waste of money? 
So we look at stuff like that to try to make a better picture for what their needs are. And obviously I try to steer them in where the right direction of where their business should go, but I don't, I'm not blind to what they're doing today. So I look at a lot of the pieces of the puzzle. And what I mean by that is in a traditional space, do you have workman's comp pay as you go? Are you writing a separate check that's causing you more issues at the end of the year? That's causing audits that you shouldn't have to go through. On the flip side of that, I look for companies that are in what's called a PEO. It's an employee leasing situation. With employee leasing, it allows the employer to co-lease their employees to the other company. That other company is a payroll slash admin company that also provides workman's comp, healthcare, 401k, HR, and it's an all-in-one solution for a lot of people. The challenge I find is that sometimes people go there because they had no choice and then stay there instead of looking. So as an example, if you're a business owner and you had some horrific thing happen and someone got hurt at work and now you're no longer able to get workman's comp in the open market through the state of Florida or any private entity, you still need to open your doors and do business. You have to go to employee leasing and pay whatever their rates are for the workman's comp. With that comes extremely high admin fees for payroll, but you need to be there. In other cases, I could see people that are looking at healthcare. Again, we're talking about small companies, four, five, six individuals, and they can't get healthcare on the open market because maybe they don't have enough individuals. Maybe there's someone that's just too sick and the cost is just too high. But when they go into that co-lease situation, they're going with a bunch of other companies that are like-minded and it gives them the opportunity to get affordable healthcare. They need to be in a PEO, a, a, a leasing situation. More oftentimes than not, they're sold on the fact that, oh, we're an all-in-one solution. We do everything for you. You don't have to do anything. But it comes at a very high cost. So today, when I sit down with an individual and I look at their situation, I, I start asking questions and I determine, hey, you don't need to be here for Workman's Comp. We can get you set up with AmTrust. I have plenty of partners that I can put you with to get you written on the open market. Or, hey, I have a healthcare folk, uh, company that can write this and get you again on the open market for a lot less money. So if those these things are true, you don't need to be in the employee leasing space. You can come to the open market. As an example, and I think we, you kind of mentioned, you heard me talking the other day, um, I had a five person company that was, they were forced into employee leasing when they opened their business because they couldn't get workman's comp in the open market. They were only two individuals. Now they're five. They can get workman's comp with AmTrust, as a matter of fact, which is one of the national brand workman's comp, and they don't need to be employee leasing. And when I just put them on traditional payroll, the difference in admin costs, what they're paying with workman's comp and payroll versus the open market, we're going to save them over $7,500. That's a lot of money for a small business. That's over $600 a month. And if you only have five or six people, I mean, that could be another truck on the road for you. That could be, yeah. that could literally be another employee that you could bring on to help grow your business. Do you really need it to be at paying admin fees? And in most cases, when we see that, that's how we're able to save them so much money. You know, I hear all the time, you know, no, my wife does the employee, you know, does the accounting. My, my wife does all the payroll stuff. My, my, my sister-in-law, family member. Um, do you have to have, I mean, do they have to have this background? I mean, I can just see that, you know, because it's not just the payroll, but it's paying, paying your vendors, paying other people, receiving money. I mean, I got businesses that, you know, we do merchant processing. And so, we have people that still are accepting checks and wire transfers. They want cash. They don't even want credit cards. And you're wondering, how do these people keep their doors open when right now nobody wants to touch money, okay? It's too dirty to be touched. Um, and obviously with checks, you can they bounce. Uh, money in South Florida, well, 40% of it can end up being fraudulent. 
uh, you know, funny money. So I ask you, is it how, how important it is it to have somebody who really knows their stuff to be handling your payroll and your receivables and all of these things that you need to have done? So listen, it's really important that you have someone that's trained that understands the process. They understand the complexity of the taxes that have to be paid, when they have to be paid, um, the frequency in which to do so, so that you're not late. Filing your taxes, filing your, your quarterlies and your, your monthlies, depending on the type of business you're in, how much money you actually pay out determines how often you have to pay into the federal government, how often you have to log into that website and, and give them their money. Um, I always tell people, listen, it, you're an expert at what you do. That's why you built this business. Go be an expert in that and let the payroll experts do the payroll side. Let the merchant processing experts do the merchant processing side. Let us guide you and, and keep you compliant in the state of Florida or for that matter, anywhere in the country um, to make sure that you have everything done on time. And by the way, um, in today's world, you talked about kind of fraudulent money. Heartland provides two different things. One is a, it's a service that we call Heartland Check. It's not actually a check. It can be direct deposit or pay card. But the concept is, is that we take the employer's money for payroll in one grab and we put it into our account and we pay all of their employees from our bank account at Heartland instead of their own. That way, if someone's trying to make a fraudulent check or, or, or scam the business, um, it won't affect them. It won't hit their operating account. They, they won't be the ones dealing with the headache. We will. Um, and then the other thing, which is, again, in today's world, not wanting to touch money, there are just a few people out there in the world that can't have direct deposit. They don't have the ability to have a bank account. For whatever reason, whether they don't want it or they can't have it, they don't. And so those are the folks that have always needed to get a physical check. And in today's environment, that person's not able to get to that check. Well, Heartland we actually provide something that's called a pay card. It's like a MasterCard. It's a debit card. And the money was deposited right under that card, which is sitting in the employee's wallet. And they could use it like they would use any debit card. They can go to, you know, the grocery store and go shopping. They can go to the gas station, fill their tank, take their significant other out to the restaurant to go to, to have dinner. Then go to an ATM and pull money out. And it doesn't have all the fees attached to it that the check cashing stores do. And it's an instant deposit as if you had a bank account. So that's a great feeling to have if you're an employee that can't have a bank account today. You, it's, it gives that chivalry back, if you will. Be able to take that significant other out to dinner and, and not have to worry about holding on to that dirty cash. You know, that's one of the places that as a credit card company, we can't, um, we can't work with what they call uh, money, money cash checking, cash checking or cash, what do they call them? Cash place. Check cashing stores, yeah. Cash checking, yeah. So or check cashing. And we, we just don't work with them because I, I believe the minimum you pay is 20% of that. And sometimes it's higher than that. So it, it, it is, you're right. You know, you worked really hard. You come home with 200 bucks for the week or 400 and you end up paying 20% of that. That's 80 bucks. I mean, it's hard. And, and I, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you've got a solution for that. Well, I think my last question is, can I ask you roughly, if I were, let's say, five employees at last, four employees, three, what am I looking at if I were to go with some features with your company compared to, I think it's all like $129 if you are working with uh, uh, QuickBooks and stuff. I mean, I've seen some of those numbers out there. Um, what if you were, can you just give me an idea? Not, nobody's going to hold no, you. Of course, of course. Yeah. That these are, this is just a guesstimate, but can you give me an idea of what a company might pay? Yeah, it, you know, it depends on whether they're running payroll every week, if they're running bi-weekly, if they're running once a month, if they're running quarterly, the prices can vary. But overall, in general, if you looked at a small company that had four or five employees and they were running bi-weekly every other week, it's probably less than $100 a month. Again, we're, we're not more expensive than QuickBook when it comes to small businesses. We're just providing more value. You could, if I had the same exact price as QuickBooks did, I'm providing things like electronic onboarding and a lot of integrations that they're not able to give. And the biggest feature is having the, the relationship, the contact. Look, we hope nothing ever goes wrong, but when if it does, don't you wanna be able to pick up the phone and talk to the 
somebody and know that somebody knows who you are. They understand and know your account. We provide those other valuable services that, that the self-service companies aren't providing. And we just don't cost more because we had a unique model when our company was built 20 years ago that allowed us to keep our office space to a minimum. My competitors that are providing self-service products, they have office spaces up and down the state of Florida where everyone has to show up to work every day. Well, they took our force of people that are out there providing the, the, us, our relationship managers, that's what we are, senior product advisors, and we don't go to an office every day. And by not having those buildings in place, we were able to, look, we still have corporate offices where everything gets done, but instead of having thousands of them, we only have a couple hundred of them, it makes a big difference because the, the, the amount of buildings that you don't have to pay lease and rent on, well, it allowed us to provide more value in all of these services. Then. And that brings a big point. You know, I've heard that a lot of companies have closed their doors and a lot of them are working somewhat successfully from home. I think that our, the way business is done will change like yours. You're working from home. You're still meeting. It doesn't mean you can't have those meetings at your merchants or your businesses offices when the doors open, but you and I can have a conversation in a meeting face to face via this medium and we can still share you know, information, and then I can send you a contract or whatever, and we can still have a full relationship of selling and buying without being face-to-face, -face, without me going to an office every day, which is costing the company money. So number one, I think we're going to have a lot less, I think we're going to have a lot more office space available and, and business space available because people are going to say, I didn't need this. We kept our doors open. I want to see if this can work better because Real estate's going up in price and rate leases and purchases, et cetera. But more importantly that I, wanna, I want you to comment on, millions of people are unemployed. Some of those, the, 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 the owner of the company is going, oh my gosh, I had to let this guy go and he's my top sales person. I love this guy. I, I'm going I'm to give him a commitment. Matter of fact, let me just send him a few dollars to uh, tide him over and, and whatever. But then there's the other employees that said, I am so glad I got rid of these guys. <laughs> I'm so glad that these people are no longer, I don't have to pay them because, you know, I was stuck with them. I couldn't find anybody better. I believe that companies who hire someone like you, as they're looking to re, um, reintegrate a workforce into their business, what do you offer for these businesses to really reach out to the top candidates and get them on board right away? So obviously what we really didn't dig into today, and I think it probably deserves a whole other call, but like it talked to the human resources side of things. We provide a platform for small businesses to have that HRIS type system that they couldn't necessarily afford. The reality is if you had three, 400 employees, you would have an integrated system that did everything for you and you would pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to get it. We decided when we built our platform to give that to the small business. So we actually, with HR, can provide you a way for you to manage your staff on the actual platform. Forget about the payroll side. I'm talking about performance reviews, job descriptions, handbooks, um, talking to professionals to tell you what to say, what not to say, how to write things, how not to write things, how to handle a situation so that you're in the right place and always on the right side of whatever issue there is with the employee. More importantly, as you're going out there to hire folks um, and bring them in, and, and right now, there's going to be a lot of talent out there. Um, we have we have an applicant tracking platform that allows you to, listen, maybe we were ahead of the curve a few minutes, but you can actually do video conferences on the actual platform. It can do all the scheduling of those interviews for you. It can actually have them answer phone questions or multiple choice questions. It does a lot of this pre-screening stuff for you. Again, you have to put the information in to get good stuff out, but it allows you to do all of this prior to even getting to that point where you can make a decision, hey, is this the best candidate? And then, and not all payroll companies do this either, when you're hiring that new employee, government actually has credits in place. It's called the Work Opportunity Tax Credit to pay you, the business owner, anywhere from $2,400 to $9,600 for hiring that individual. We actually, we are actually able to determine on our onboarding platform, it's an electronic onboarding platform, 
where we ask the right questions all before they even come to the office. And again, it can be part of your pre-hiring process. You could have five candidates. One of them could be a veteran with a DD-214. Maybe too much information for here, but the reality is that person, if you hire them, could pay you $9,600. Most people don't even realize that exists. We help you get that. You know, I, 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 it probably is a great way, but I want people because each business is individual. I think that this is enough information right now that people who need to look at who they're going to be hiring afterwards. Um, and let me just, I guess I should explain the reason why I asked you that question. I have a, a friend who's, whose daughter just graduated with a spatial, what is it called? An aeronautics engineer degree. And she was actually interviewing and on the short list of SpaceX. They were asking lots of money. They were willing to do stuff. But then this thing happened and she went like crickets. Didn't hear from them anymore. Another company swooped in because they saw the resume and they have already committed, had her sign. It's actually advancing her the extra at least month and commitment. So SpaceX just missed out on this phenomenal person that is entering the workforce that's already got experience in exactly what they wanted and they lost out because somebody dropped the ball because whatever the reason. So right now I'm thinking to myself, there's a lot of salespeople, there's a lot of engineers, there's a lot of good technicians out there in the HVAC world and every place else. If you're out there looking and people have their resume out there, you guys can be a perfect platform for them to get you them to get set up as a business and then hire the right people to just phew, soar their business in growth. Agreed? Absolutely. And at the end of the day, um, when you look at what's happening with COVID and the stuff that we're dealing with, um, one of the things that, uh, that we're able to do is we actually, during these really difficult times, we opened up our HR platform to all of our staff, uh, to all of our clients to have the ability to use HR even if they didn't purchase it. We gave them the opportunity to go in and look and see, hey, what's out there and what can I do? And right now, this is the kind of space that I'm in. As an example, some people are retracting because they don't have a choice. Others are looking for that foothold. How do I get that person? And then they're able to pick up the phone and have a conversation with our HR team. And on staff could be anything from an HRIS employee all the way up to an MBA and a lawyer. But they could say to them, hey, listen, this is my situation. I feel like I'm going to lose out on this opportunity or I'm looking for to take advantage of this opportunity. What's my steps? What's the best way for me to do this to make sure that I can get that person to come work for me and they can guide them through that process. So Michael, this has been great information. If I do, you, you do offer free consultation. Do I? Uh... I, I absolutely do. Okay. Yeah. And, Would and, you and mind I, telling that people? Go ahead. And I was going to say is um, any, I always speak to, I have people that call me to get payroll type advice that are not even clients. They, I have no problem with, I think that if we're helping other business owners grow where they need to be, eventually they'll find the need to have a service like Heartland payroll. And eventually they will be a client. So my goal is always to help people first. Okay. So would you give people how they can communicate with you? So we will finish this call. Yeah, absolutely. So I would tell everyone to just, you know, feel free to call my cell phone. It's seven, five, four, Two two four nine two three four. 9234 They could email me. It's really simple. It's michael.ross, M-I-C-H-A-E-L dot R-O-S-S at E-HPS, Heartland Payroll Solutions dot com. Again, E-HPS dot com. And if you can't remember that, well, call my good friend Stephanie. I'm sure she'll get, get a hold of me for you. I'll be putting uh, right at the beginning of this e this uh, video. I'll be posting his um, his business card so that it's right there at the beginning. So thank you again, Michael, for giving us that great information. Uh, I think a lot of businesses, like I said, right now a lot of people are going to be looking at rehiring, maybe just their complete staff. But you know, there's a lot of good people that have been let go, and this is really a good time to get the cream of the crop that has is just sitting home waiting. So. Thank you so much for your time, Michael. Stephanie, thank you very much. I look forward to talking to you soon. You too.